It is BlackBerry Today, Episode 10, Shoot Foot and Reload. We want to thank our sponsor, Skin It. Get the best covers for your devices. Use the discount code and link that we have in the show notes. Go. You're saying go? I said go. We're off and running. We're off and running. BlackBerry Today, Episode number 10. 10. We are in business. We are back from... Is it just called BB DevCon or what is it? BlackBerry Dev? It's officially BlackBerry DevCon Americas. BlackBerry DevCon. Oh, that's right. They're doing one all over. Oh, wait a minute. I almost screwed up. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's here. For everybody. Sorry about that. I almost screwed up and to get the mandatory drink before the beginning. Right. So it's been a couple weeks and we are back. Uh, last week was BB DevCon Americas. So... Do you want to do the news first about the DevCon and then we'll talk about everything that happened or you, you want to talk about the outage first? Oh, let's, let's talk about the, what? yeah, let's talk about the outage first. The outage first. <laughs> everyone, this has been on everybody's mind. So the consumers and everybody else, it's been on your mind. There was an outage. It's uh, overstarted over in Europe and made its fun way around the globe. Sort of like a big giant wave going around the world, <laughs> knocking out. <laughs> It, it's, it's like in a stadium when everybody hey, right. throws their hands up and it follows it, you around. Except in a stadium, those who are first also stop first. And that was not how this lovely wave yeah. occurred. Those who were first had to endure the longest outage. But anyway, go ahead. Yes. Correct. And the problem being is that people were not getting email. You weren't getting BBM messages. You weren't getting anything. So Rim Solution, I'm going to go right for the solution. Okay. was a public apology from the CEO. He jumped online and gave a public apology, which was nice to see. You know, hey, hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Here's an apology. Yeah, we screwed up. Not really sure what the deal was, but that's pretty much what we did. Then he said, they said a few days later, we're going to give everybody, everybody, $100 from the big, bad, magical app world. And everyone said, okay, $100 for a three-day, maybe four-day outage. Not bad. That's about three months worth of data here in the U S at least you pay about 30 bucks a month for full unlimited Blackberry data. Not bad. You're giving us back a few months. We're a little mad. We're a little concerned over your, yeah. yeah. Bad timing, bad timing right around the uh, whole iPhone announcements. And instead of just giving you a hundred dollar credit, they said, you know what? We're going to pick the apps for you and equal the hundred dollars. Um, not quite sure what to say, but right now we're, as of recording time, two applications in, two. Uh, one, of, one of which sucked. The first one killed me three times. So this is on the 9930. It is the, the bold we talked about, right? 9930, the bold. Uh, three times installs, all three times, boom, 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 crash, crash, crash. Uninstalled. That was drive safely pro free for you now enjoy this gift um i, I don't know how much it was before it doesn't say because now it says free right but i know the star rating is only at three stars for the app overall and then while we were at devcon they released app number two Woo! and uh bubble bash two compliments of blackberry down to two stars <laughs> and every comment says what this is killing my battery and killing my device um i can't believe it so right. do you think they should have taken the hundred dollars and said here's a hundred to buy whatever apps you want yes okay well that's sorry that <laughs> was, that then, was that not the whole question well honestly when i heard the announcement I thought that's what it was, right? All I saw was BlackBerry App World, $100 worth of apps. I thought that's actually pretty nice, especially because here in the U.S., I wasn't even affected for a full 24 hours. You know, it was something less than that. Um, So that was pretty great, right? $100 worth of free apps. Fantastic. Yeah, I didn't realize it was going to be limited, um, limited to only apps. And then I thought, okay, limited, meaning I was going to go look and it was going to be like a list of, you know, 30 apps that I could choose from. Right. No, uh, that's not the case either. So they're releasing them like kind of one at a time, very slowly. Um, so yeah, no, I th- I definitely thought it should have been a hundred dollars 
if they're going to give something, I, I'm not saying they had to give me anything, but if they were going to give me something, give me a hundred dollars to choose from, not a hundred dollars worth of so far really crappy apps. I wonder if there's someone sitting there actually choosing carefully these applications, like sitting there and actually like, we're going to walk through and just one by one test these applications. Yeah, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with no. Uh, first of all, one of the things I saw on the second one, the bubble one, whatever that's called, mm -hmm. I noticed on the comments, luckily, before I installed it, not supported on OS 7. Which the Bold 9930 runs. Which my device, the Bold 9930 runs. And segueing into a perhaps later portion of our show, yes. it's a big deal. If okay. it's not supported, you might want to hold off on that. We'll Correct. talk about that more in a little bit. Oh, yes, I think you should. Yes. So I finally got the darn thing uninstalled on my side for the drive mm -hmm. safely. Right. Um, sent a public message out via Twitter. And I think I, I didn't get a response or did they say contact support or something? I don't know what it was. Whichever it was, uh, it's it's uninstalled. It was a neat idea, but it, it just it killed me. Couldn't right. shut it down. Uh, battery poles, so it had to go. It was it was crashing. Uh, when I finally got it to shut down, almost it was crashing. So uh, I'm done. So I, I'm hoping that maybe they just say, you know, yeah, we kind of gave you a couple apps, and we're not doing the best at this. So here's here's a, a credit, seventy five dollars at this point. But then everyone would scream. They still need to give a hundred dollars. Right. They, they but hey, they're available through December thirty first. Yes, crappy apps are available through December thirty first. Um, you can even get BlackBerry Travels now in there. I mean, they're starting to add. No, I'm sorry. BlackBerry Travels is not part of the giveaway. It's now in their yeah. carousel. It's in their carousel. So they're starting to light up the carousel. All right. So they, we took care of that. So the outage was there. People, yeah, you suffered. Uh, the problem is with the BlackBerry that a lot of you are finding out is you rely so heavily on their network, meaning not your internet provider of your, your telephony, cell phone provider, but the actual BlackBerry network which right. sit in data centers. And people don't realize that the BlackBerry network sits in its own data centers. Uh, there's encrypted traffic. There's a whole bunch of things that go on behind the scenes that your telco carrier, whoever it is globally that watches our show, connects to for you for the BlackBerry service. So when they're down, you're done. This, I mean, it's a phone, but it does no nothing else for you. Right. So. And, okay. and not to not to kick a dead horse while it's down or whatever the phrase is. But I was also a little disappointed just during the outage. I was disappointed in um, RIM's communication. First, there was no communication. Correct. Then there was, um, they threw up a page just for that, basically like a support.blackberry.com or something like that. And, you know, it just said, we're sorry, it's out. Right. It, you know, there wasn't a lot of information, not that information would have fixed it, or, but it certainly would have made me feel a little better to know, hey, we know what the problem is, we're working on it, and it may be one to two days or something, you know, give me something, some sort of communication to make me feel a little bit better and a little less just disconnected. Well, let's, let's segue to the other communication they just put out today, the day we're recording. So this is on the 27th about the Playbook 2.0, the OS release for Playbook 2.0. Oh, yeah. Okay. So talk about communication. They came out today for everyone that has a playbook. Oh, I don't have mine sitting here. Uh, so uh, DevCon gave a playbook to everybody mm -hmm. that was there to get you more involved. We'll talk about DevCon in a minute. And said you can get the new 2.0 beta that doesn't include some of the cool features yet, like integrated mail and the other stuff that's coming in the next upgrade release. Or you can get the 1.0 stable version. Either one you want. Here's your playbook. Uh, and then today they came out and said, you know, we're feeling that 2.0 isn't ready. We're talking now, which was supposed to be already done, mm -hmm. February 2012 at the earliest. Right. And people, and, and, and no BBM. Oh, yeah. I thought that was still coming in 2012, February 2012. No, no BBM and February 2012. Yeah. They, yeah. 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 <laughs> you talk about shooting a horse when it's down or whatever it is. Yeah. They're kicking it kicking in the stomach they're rolling it's sorry PETA <laughs> for all our people remember so it's only it's only in a you just you know a term a verbiage right uh, for those uh international that means that uh you're hurt on the side of the road and instead of trying to help you they drive over you that's what right. that means no bbm no bbm yeah they're, they're killing themselves right 
Yeah, as a as a good friend of ours likes to say, shoot self in foot, reload. Yes. <laughs> reload. Reload automatic weapons. Yes. So, yeah. Well, that's no. the news on the... I don't want to go further than that about the 2-0 news because it just came out today. That's what they've stated. Everyone's yelling and screaming. They want it sooner. They want it now. They want... Uh, why did you release it already? I mean, uh, 1-0 without any mail integration. It's just people are going crazy about it. So let's go to uh, the, the brighter news. Why don't you cover the brighter news that you got from DevCon? Okay. Um, so, yeah, so we were we were at BlackBerry DevCon Americas in San Francisco. Um, it was fun. It was interesting. There wasn't a ton of news that I would share here because a lot of it was developer-related. Um, one thing that was very interesting, and even though it was a developer um, – Thing, it, it affects a lot of people is that they seem to really, really be pushing towards developers BBM integration. So how to get BlackBerry Messenger integrated into your apps as a developer. What I found interesting about that as a user, as someone who owns a device, is I'm going to be seeing a lot more BlackBerry Messenger integration in apps that are coming out. Um, I actually think it's a smart move by them to push that because as they said somewhere in one of the sessions, um, that makes it viral, right? So how do you pick a new app to put on your device? A lot of times you're going to watch a show like this, or a friend of yours is going to say, hey, I got this really cool app and you have to put it on there. You probably don't get the majority of your apps just by going out and browsing through the app store, right? Maybe it's in the carousel, you might try it out, but you're probably just not going to just go and browse and look for apps. So the way the BBM integration works is now you can um, see, A, you can play games with each other through BlackBerry Messenger. But not only that, you can share what games you play that have the integration through Messenger. So in other words, um, you know, if, if there was a chess game, say, and we were playing chess via BlackBerry Messenger, even if you and I weren't playing, but me and somebody else was playing, you could see what games I play on Messenger. And you would see it and go, oh, hey, that sounds cool. Let me try that out. Um, so it's a bit more viral for their applications. I think it's a good thing. And it was a big push that was there. One of the big things they kept saying over and over and over again. You know, we walked in. They had the um, BlackBerry Messenger hackathon, which was kind of cool. They had a lot of people all there creating apps in that moment. You know, not they hadn't worked on them before, or maybe they did, but they were in there all working together, asking questions, um, all centered around BlackBerry Messenger applications. So I think that's going to be big. That's what you're going to see a lot in the App Store. Um, you know, from your friends on BlackBerry Messenger, you're going to see a lot of the BlackBerry Messenger integrated apps. Yeah, we went into the hackathon mm -hmm. and went into both rooms and they were hard at work. There was a lot they of were. people in there. We have some pictures. And it was late. That wasn't like it went from during the day, to, during sessions. It was late. What, 7 to 1 a.m.? Right. Yeah, it was a long run, which was... So, I mean, if you, if you think about school, you know, most conferences, the work part is over at like 5 or 6 o'clock, right? Everybody kicks off and goes and drinks in the bar. These people were in there, and they were working hard, and there was no alcohol. <laughs> they no. were working hard. There was voluntarily. Red Bull. Red Bull. Yeah. And there was sodas. Pizza. And pizza. chips and pizza. Yeah, that's how what they had. So they were working hard, but they uh, we'd love to see some of the outcomes of those um, hit the streets. I'd love to see a couple of the examples of, from the hackathon actually, you know, be produced and and sent out there for everyone to use. Can mm -hmm. I do say you do sound better this episode? I do. You sound. Do I sound better? You sound better. <laughs> the new uh, studio microphone was a little too far away last episode. Uh, we just we, no one really made a comment, but we noticed it in post edit and said, well, nothing we can do about it. So get over it. I'd like to point that out. Okay. Okay. I'm glad. We just want to cover that for everybody in case you were wondering what right. happened. Well, you know, they were all, you know, not all, but there were many comments about me not having a real mic and then we got a real mic and then you couldn't hear me. So hopefully yeah, it's, it's it, better. The whiners, you know, just can't, no one's perfect. Everyone's just, you know, whining. Just don't worry about it. Right. Uh, right. Other news from there was everything was games. Uh, there was games, yes. Games. Everything, there was an Android push for porting your application over. And they even had a whole dedicated area set up. If you brought uh, your Android app with you, then they would help port it for you. As long as it didn't have really something advanced like camera integration, but just a normal app that ran mm -hmm. to help you port. Uh, they were giving away free passes for that, for those that ported yep. their apps. Because uh, they're trying to get everybody, oh, hey, we have the market and the app store will be available on the device in a way. So you have a player or we'll port it and make it native. 
Um, but that was an interesting twist while we were there as they announced BBX. BBX, yes. Um, and then the same day got slapped with a cease lawsuit. and desist lawsuit that said, hey, uh, that's uh, a name we've owned since 1985 for Business Basic Extended. And no, you can't do it. And Brim said, no one's going to be confused by that and shunned them off. And right now they're just waiting to see what happens. Right. But they announced BBX. Tell them the bad news about BBX. It won't work on any of your current devices. That's not bad news. Oh, that's not bad news? No. The bad news. It's kind of bad news. When you have a brand new device, it's kind of bad news. What about okay, the apps? Ahead. It's the applications, I thought. Then not all the apps will port over to the new BBX. Oh, right. No, yeah, none. So you won't just take an app and throw it on there and off you go and you're running. They're going to have to do some recoding. There's going to be new applications. Um, yeah. It's kind of like switching between iOS and Android in a way because you're getting a whole new layer that will then have to be redone. Right. Now, that's something we're noticing between, let's say, moving from the other i products. Mm -hmm. From an iPod to an iPad, you can run them in a smaller mode, but they run. I right. cannot take a BlackBerry app and put it on the playbook. No, you cannot. And everyone needs to understand that. So you just can't go, oh, I want to go to the same app world. Totally different set. And now, so yeah, then with BBX, you won't be able to take your old BlackBerry apps and put them on that either. Um, what was it? Shoot, foot, reload. Yes, reload. Okay. okay. Reload. Was reload. There more news? Do we have more news? Um, well, I have some current, current news that I just saw actually just before we started to re uh, record. Re to reload? Go for it. To reload. <laughs> Yeah, we're not reloading, hopefully. Um, and that is for businesses. I'm not sure how that's defined, but um, for businesses who purchase from a set list of purchasers, buy two play playbooks, get one free. Wait, what? Yeah. Say that again. Buy two playbooks, get one free. I'm just letting that sink in for a minute. Buy two playbooks, get one free. Yes. I understand. <laughs> but okay so buy two get one free because we're they're hopefully targeting businesses so you know well we need to get them all for our staff and now's our chance so instead of just knocking them all down a price of a third right buy two get one free okay all right um i hope a bunch of you buy some playbooks there you go and after everything we've told you i hope you still buy some playbooks right that's it for the news. All right. Well, let's mention uh, our sponsor because that was a hot topic for you. It was. At DevCon. Uh, our sponsor, oh. Skin It, who we are love to have is, oh, fancy. So what we have is the coverings for all the different devices and not just your BB devices. It covers everything. But the idea is that you're able to buy, even upload your own custom pictures, uh, a skin that goes on your device. And it helps give it a little bit of protection. It's not a case, but it gives a little bit of protection to the outside of the device. So if you and scratch- it's pretty. That's oh, pretty. If you spread, do you actually have the other playbook one? I, I, I actually don't have my playbook up here. I, I relocated oh, myself. So. They match. But yeah, so my playbook matches. And as you said, they do have other devices besides RIM devices. They also have all the eyes and, and uh, other devices. One thing I did think was a little bit cool, and I, I actually realized it this week when a lot of people were asking me about it, is that the, um, I'm not sure how well you can see it on here. The Skinit device is actually uh, cover is actually nice enough to have the drawings, whatever you want to call that, the little icons on there. Mm -hmm. I, I have had a different skin in the past for another device, and it didn't have that. You kind of just had to know, which of course, <laughs> us power users know which button is which. But um, it's nice that it's on there for you, so you can just see that. Uh, okay, so it had the menu button, the telephone, right? So the the disconnect and the connect and the BlackBerry button and the back button are all on there for you. That's good and fuzzy. It's perfect. We'll try to get it. Well, I don't I can't get a shot of that. So, okay. Well, either way, that's good. Actually, that's nice. So people asked about it a lot. It was really yeah. nice to see a lot of the geeks were asking about it. So we'll, hopefully all of you go out there and visit Skin It. Uh, we thank them. And always in the show notes, almost we have a code for discounted purchases. So you have to go read the show notes real quick to get it because the code changes. I usually get the code the same day we publish. And I yep. think one came today again for us. Uh, usually gives you anywhere from 20 to 30% off. Uh, it's a special checkout code that you use. 
And they don't just have pretty. I'm sorry, because I did say they were pretty. Yeah. They have, like, everything. They have sports teams. They have humorous ones. And, again, like you said, you can upload your own photo. Yeah. So. Put your kids on the back. You know? There put, you go. Put your favorite sports team on the back. Which um, is really handy when you're at a BlackBerry conference and a lot of people have these. Yes. It's really nice to know this one's mine. Don't touch. Correct. Yeah, mainly all those playbooks. On... Mine stood out. Oh, so. throw them on the table. You have seven or eight devices at a lunch table sitting there, and you'd be like, "Oh, nice, you know, device." So, we want to thank Skinit though. So, check the show notes. Please click the link through, and we have codes for you for the discount. So, it just helps uh, keep us on the air as long as you can possibly imagine. So, it's app time. App time. App time. I usually go first. Should I go? You should go because I know you're really excited about yours. Great. If I can remember what the heck it was, no I'm kidding. Uh, oh. Wicketude. So we yeah. met the people there. They were actually at the event. Uh, Wicketude was standing there. Uh, quite impressive that they were there in full force showing off their application. It's a free app and it's almost like an augmented reality. So it's very cool. So Wicketude loads up and we'll get some screenshots here for you. It'll show you things that are closest. It'll show you, uh, you can browse worldwide, BB chat, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, Wikipedia things, Last FM, YouTube, Flickr. So what you get is the ability to bring up the actual Wikitude application, open up one of the, even Twitter, wow, open up one of the sub apps, I'll call them on page one. They've got multiple apps and they have featured ones and then point your camera around the room and it shows you distance and where they are and you on your touch screen, you can actually, you can touch and get information about it. So what we'll do is we'll put it on the small camera and I'll do a demo as I do it. So if I go in and I click something and people can have public too for like BBM chat. So you could find mm -hmm. people publicly, but I'll pick something like last FM. And why would I pick that is it'll bring up the camera. And as I move it around, oh, you got to do, this is a great part. So you all know it does a compass tune up. So what you have to do is take the device and flip it and tilt it until it vibrates to let you know that it's got its direction. Cool. And where it is. So depending on where you are and how long this goes, you get there it goes. It just vibrated. So now it's set. So now when I hold it up, it's a live camera. There's me. Oh, oh. It, sorry. Screen went dark. Right. It'll help if I did that. There we go. Oh, I turned it off. We saw you. It's okay. We believe you. No, no, no. I'm talking about to see if we can find a thing. It was it said recalibrate your compass. It didn't like me. All oh. of a sudden, it's well. Well, while you're while you're recalibrating, I'll tell you a funny thing that when we were there and we were talking to the gentleman um, from the company, mm -hmm. and he was showing us demonstrating it, and uh, he held it up, and I saw Starbucks, and uh, he's apparently not from the San Francisco because he was like, "Oh yeah, sure, let's click on Starbucks," and the screen filled with dots because um, there's a Starbucks in like every single direction possible. <laughs> right. It uses your GPS too. Yeah. That's really nice. But the idea is that it's more augmented and you can find Foursquare venues, Gowalla, uh, Twitter, I said YouTube, uh, something about history is on there, things that are just closest. That just, that interests me, closest interests me. Cool. Uh, it uses your GPS and co compass. Okay, so I found something that says closest. Let me click it. And it is not far. It says it's a few hundred. It's a Twitter person. Oh, nice. Right, so... It's a Twitter person. Um, and then there's a couple more pages. There's also, this one interests me, webcams. So if there's public webcams that are put outside oh, or okay. at, a, let's say, a national monument, and it's wherever you are, you can right. click the webcam and see the webcam. Uh, and I don't know what the other ones are. So Wikitude, free application. Uh, as more people use it, it'll be more beneficial. Mm -hmm. And it uses, you know, turns on. So it does turn on your camera uh, temporarily. It doesn't take pictures but it actually enables it while it shows you and gives you an augmented reality on the BlackBerry. Cool. So hands, hands, you know, thumbs up to the Wicketude guys. And we appreciate they were there and sat, took a few minutes to walk through the app with us in detail to give some explanation about the uh, application. Cool. It's all yours. It's all mine, except for now I'm installing Wicketude. So now I'm, I'm, uh, I, I've got the hourglass. Amuse yourselves for a second. <laughs> um, Okay, so my application that I'll just have to remember because uh, I can't see it is um, from Pro On Go. We actually met the developer while we were there, and uh, he was hacker. telling us if he's a hacker. How cool is that? Okay, so he's a coder, he's a hacker, and his name's Hacker. Okay, his real name on his license. Anyway, um, I digress. 
uh, ProOngo is a pretty cool little app for getting your expenses. So it's not just a tracking your expenses application, because there's uh, quite a few of those, but this one you actually can take a picture of your receipt. And there's two levels, so it's freemium. Uh, the free level, which I think you have, right, is that you take a picture, you, sp you put it in and you type in you know, the amounts and, and whatever. Uh, the other one, the one you pay for, you take a picture and it sends it in and deciphers the receipt for you. No, mine gets deciphered too. Oh, yours does? Yeah, I just can't do something else with it. But mine gets deciphered because I don't put an amount in. It always comes back with an amount. Oh, excellent. So, um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. So I sent one in and I kind of took a fuzzy, bad picture and poor lighting to really test it out. <laughs> and it came back and it had the correct vendor, but it had the incorrect amount. And it actually has this really cool thing. So you can click on that and then you can say, you know, well, it, it asks you, did we get everything right? And it shows you the date and the vendor and the amount. And I said, no. And it said, well, give us a chance, send it back in and we'll try again. And uh, one thing he told us that sort of differentiates them from anybody else who might do this is they have actual people. So if the, um, if the OCR software can't figure it out, they have an actual person to look at it and say, okay, well, it must mean this and this must be what the amount is and they send it back to you and it did get it right it didn't get it right on the first try because like i said it was purposefully a horrible picture but on the second try it came back and it's exactly right it has the right vendor has the right amount has the date um i think also the premium one has um more advanced stuff like you can route it through someone so if i had a manager or if i was a manager and i had employees underneath me i could approve um, or not approve their expenses and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool. Now, there's one couple cool things that I liked. You, you kind of left off. One is there is a edit mode when you first take the picture mm -hmm. that allows you to white out parts of the receipt with your finger. Oh, right. Or I app. forgot about that. Yeah. And so you could block, like, if you didn't want the end of your credit card number ever showing, even though it only has the last four normally, you can white that. And the export feature, uh, you can export into multiple formats. Uh, spreadsheets, Excel, QuickBooks. So these things really sync up. It's categorized. You can actually put categories to everything mm -hmm. that you take a receipt for. It's pretty slick. Yeah, it's got a lot of, uh, you know, there's reports on here that you can look at and graphs and uh, you can filter out stuff so you can look at only certain expenses, maybe for a particular trip or on a base particular category, um, et cetera. So it's actually, it's pretty cool. Yeah, date range filter too. So uh, how much is it, the application, the, the pro version? Do you remember? There's several different versions, I think, because it's geared towards uh, okay. corporations. So there, I think there was, you know, multi-user levels, if I recall correctly. I don't get prompted now because I'm, I'm on the premium. So I don't, I don't see the list. Oh, uh, we should warn that is that you do get prompted the first time. Yes. You come in to subscribe. Uh, 30 days uh, free ability uh, pro package will give you 50 receipts a month, unlimited expense report, exports, credit card integration, workflow, web portal access, and premium support. Five bucks a month, cancel anytime, or forty-seven ninety a year. Then there's a basic package, which knocks down to 30 a month, web portal, da-da-da, 2 dollars a month, twenty-eight seventy a year. And then there's the Road Warrior package. 100 receipts per month, custom spreadsheet, unlimited expense report exports, credit card integration, web portal access, premium technical support, uh, uh, nine ninety nine a month or ninety five ninety a year, and then there's the free package. Right. Manually do your stuff on the phone app only. No web portal, no premium support, but you can do mileage, time, receipt, and income. And then there's business packages. So we won't walk through all those, but they got multiple levels of business packages. Yeah. Five, twenty five, forty users, a hundred users. Um, it's it's crazy the amount of different reports they have. They used um six hundred font to do it in though. But we won't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think that's only that's only on our devices as they are newer devices and uh, need to be tested out. But hey, you know what? It actually works on OS seven. <clears throat> oh, let's point that out. Yeah, it works on OS seven. So uh, that's both applications. So you yes. segued. Yeah. Let's jump right into what's wrong that you're having with applications in OS seven, Kathy. Uh, well, if you'll recall from uh, the last episode when I said I had to reinstall my OS twice and I said that it was all my own fault, I will say a word of caution. <laughs> 
don't install apps that are not ready for OS 7. Um, if you'll remember several, several episodes back, I recommended BeeBuzz as a fantastic little app that allowed you to change your notifications from different users and from different like email and different applications and all that fantastic stuff. And it worked so well on my tour, which had OS 5 installed. And it broke my beautiful new curve, uh, bold, my beautiful new bold. It broke it just killed it. It, um, I think what happened was I installed the old one, which was not, you know, supported for OS 7. Well, let's back up how you installed the old one first. Let's or not back up. Stop there. You did the proper. I did the proper version, which well, is supported on OS 7. No, 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 was, no. You plugged it in. Plugged you it in. did the upgrade. It did an automatic backup of your device yes. from the old device. Yes. And then it tried to restore the old no. version. No. No, oh, I don't think that was the problem. No, no, no. So what was the okay, okay, the long story, and this is gonna be a long show now. I'm sorry. No, it's not. You can make it short. Just tell them it was how are you getting the old version? I okay, so they had um the new version is in the app world. I got that one and that works fine. But I didn't have the full version, right? So they're a freemium uh -huh. kind of application. I had licensing for the full version in the old one. Okay. And they didn't have a free upgrade to the new one. So I thought, Miss Smarty Pants, I'll just go to their website and I'll click the link that I clicked on before and I'll download the old full version that I'm licensed for. Yeah. What yeah, happened, no. What happened to your phone? <laughs> well, what happened to my phone was my uh, little profiles notification, the little icon in the upper left that tells me which profile I'm on, you know, whether it's silent or loud or whatever, looked like normal, the medium, I think it is, um, and was silent completely silent silent in all ways as in silent no vibrate no dings no notifications and mm -hmm. fantastically if someone called me i could answer the call i could talk on the call i could not disconnect the call and you couldn't hear them calling no I, it's only if i happened to look down and i happened to see the lights flashing and i saw that oh someone's calling me so if you went in and tried to change the no, I got um, either a Java error or I got just a blank screen. In the sounds and profiles tab, mm -hmm. it was just a blank screen. And on OS and, 7, you can go through the options. Right. So I was trying to do everything I could possibly do, every backdoor way to get in there. And no, it was dead. I had to reinstall the OS again. And now, when you went into the options, what did you get? Maybe there's something else that happened in the options. It was a blank screen. I chose sounds and profiles or sounds and ringtones, blank screen. Instead of four menu items, blank screen. I thought we were able to get into something that wouldn't let us override or there was a menu that wouldn't. That was within the BeeBuzz application itself. Oh. And then here's the tricky thing. Like even though once I had uninstalled it, it was still somehow doing stuff. That's what the problem was. And I couldn't uninstall it really all the way. So I had to just reinstall the OS. How many times did you do that? Um, now I think I've done it a total of four times. Excellent. I'm a pro. If anybody needs their OS reinstalled, you call me because I'm good at it now. <laughs> well, they can call. They can call the show 443-BB <laughs> today. Uh, we appreciate. We've had a couple. Uh, we actually had some voicemails come through. Uh, we've had tweets. Tweets. b Barry today. So we've had tweets coming through. And we've had some emails. b Barry at Spike Studio. Uh, BB today, I'm sorry, at SpikeStudio.com. So, and then while we were there, we had shirts. We actually we had did. shirts for BlackBerry today. That was very nice. Cards. Mm -hmm. And we met some new people that, you know, started peeking at the show while we were sitting there. We did. It's kind of nice to, kind of nice to see. It was. All right. Well, let's wrap it up and get on time. What, what kind of tip do you have for this week? My tip is a small one, but an awesome one. And that is if you are, oh, I'm sorry. We have to back up because we did have an apology to make. Okay. We had several things that we thought were so cool and so new with OS 7, and we were corrected and informed that those were available in OS 6, but just neither you nor I knew that because we were both on OS 5, as I think is the rest of the world. Correct. We should say anyone on a torch saw the old torch with the slide out keyboard saw the OS 6, but everybody that we get that watches the show is either still stuck in late fours or five. I don't know that many people that ran six. So to us, it was brand new. It's right. like any software package. If you skipped a version, you'd go, wow, look at the new stuff. And they go, dude, that was right. there before. Right. So we apologize to the yes. people that pointed that out. Sorry. But guess what? 
Nobody knew. Okay. So my tip is, if you're in OS 7 and possibly OS 6, but who knows, um, <laughs> there is the, you have the panels, right? The all and the frequent and the whatever it all, whatever the panels are. Mm -hmm. I don't use them. But there is the, if you've completely back buttoned out so that you have most of your screen showing and just the row of icons at the bottom. Okay. You can either hit menu and maximize panel, which is two clicks. Or because if you're like me, you don't, but you fewer clicks, the better. You can either tap or single click on the all, the top of the panel. And that pops up the whole panel. Yes. Nice. And, and there's just a few things like that. So at the top, if you hit the top bar, it pops down like what's on your calendar for the day and upcoming. And, you know, to the right is the magnifying glass for search and to the left is the quick shortcut to your um, profiles. But the middle bar, I never would have thought to click on that. Same thing with the panel top. I never would have thought to click on that. Both of those were accidental and I like both of them. Very nice. I like that. So that's my tip. Okay. I like, I like the tip. The tip is very good. I really like it. What do you got? Tip. What do you got? Um, I like something that's actually in the email now, which was probably there in six. But <laughs> while you're in email, if that's where you need to be, which mm -hmm. I think that's where you need to be. And now you go into email. Mm -hmm. And if you highlight a message, any message in there, doesn't matter who, who it is, and you highlight a message, you can quickly hit the menu button, mm -hmm. scroll down, and there's two searches now. There's search and search by. Oh, I noticed that. If you go to search by, you can automatically search by that sender or subject and there's advanced. But I can go and say, oh, that sender, click, bam. I got a whole list of return things 19 that fast. So it just, yeah, it's the a search, quick, yeah. It does seem improved. Yeah. To so me. there's a whole in bunch seven, of ways. You can play with five. the advanced. You can go in and type things in. You can do a standard search, set what field. But if you're on a message, you know, oh, I know this person or I know this subject has been up before. Go down right below it, search by, subject, go, and it's it's pretty instantaneous on this darn device. It's brilliant. Yep. And if you do it in the main mailbox where you consolidate, it searches across all of them instead of just individually by different mail accounts. So that was that's my tip is the search by and then hit like subject or sender, and it's lightning fast, and then you can find everything by that one. And it's great if you want to delete a message, all messages from somebody. Nice. Highlight a message, done. There you go. Good. All right. I have one bonus tip. Bonus Sorry, tip. Sorry, made me think of it. Bonus round. Um, just because it, it came up a lot this week, and I don't necessarily mean at BlackBerry DevCon. I just mean in the past week and people I've been chatting with. And that is um, complaining about the BlackBerry browser. And I mentioned this before. It was my app in a prior episode. I talked about the Bolt browser. Yes. So if you're running um, an older OS on an older device, get Bolt browser because it is improved, much improved over the native browser on your BlackBerry. But I also have to say, if you have a new device and you're on OS 7, you you realize this is a non-issue. The new browser is so much better. Yep, it so is. So much better. So, I, you know, just a lot of times people complain, oh, my BlackBerry, I don't, it's not that great, you know, but it's like a five-year-old device. <laughs> so if you can, and if that's the thing that bugs you the most, upgrade, because the OS 7 um, browser is just totally different, totally different than past browsers, way better. Nice. I should say we have a few photos up from BB DevCon on Flickr. We'll put the link in the show notes. So we do have a few that are, I'm sorry, BB DevCon Americas uh, up there in the show notes. Uh, we will probably not be at the other BB DevCons over in Asia and wherever the other one is. Europe, is it? Europe. Mm -hmm. Europe and Asia. Probably won't be at those, but we hope if you do go, uh, definitely let us know if there's anything new or exciting that happens there. Get in touch with us or if you have comments from it or gosh darn it, uh, you know, tell people to watch our show. Start right. sharing the news. So that's it. Episode 10. Uh, we ran a few minutes longer than usual, but yeah, there's a lot to cover with the big uh, the outage plus the BB DevCon stuff. If you need something else, you know how to reach us. Otherwise, check the show notes. And we thank everybody, and we'll talk to you in a couple weeks. Bye.